Hello you guys and welcome back to another episode of the To Nurture Your Soul podcast. I always feel like To Nurture Your Soul is such a tongue twister. Every time I sit here and I say it for the intro, I'm like, hmm, why? It Like it looks good written out on paper, love my business name, but like saying it out loud, does anyone else feel like it's a bit of a tongue twister or is it just me? I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but anyways <laughs> hello you guys and welcome back to another episode i am so excited to sit down in my little spot as always this is my weekly wednesday morning which i love i have had a very rough start to my week this week so i am so incredibly excited to just be able to sit down and chat with you guys this is one of my favorite things that i get to sit down and do every single week so i'm just excited to sit to chill to hang out with you all and to shoot the shit you know uh because that's what we do here and especially today because i don't really have a specific topic for today's episode um i did ask you guys over on instagram really quickly this morning and i have gotten one reply so far so we'll have a look at that after i give you guys my little weekly update as i do at the beginning of these episodes this week for me has been um (laughs) different it's been a lot. (laughs) As you guys know, I try my absolute best to keep a positive mindset like 95% of the time. I definitely think it's healthy to let yourself feel your feels and like acknowledge exactly how you're feeling about a particular situation. But I also think it's really important not to get stuck on that and think that every single thing is the end of the world. And it's really freaking hard sometimes, especially when there's one thing after the next after the next and I feel like that's what I've kind of been dealing with this week. I feel like every single day it's been a new little thing that is just piling on top of the list of things which is totally okay and I'm trying to remind myself you know feel the feels with how you feel about the situation whether that's anger, sadness, stressed anxiety, feel the feel, give yourself the day and then pick yourself back up the next day and remember that you're a bad bitch, because you are. (laughs) I am, and all of you are as well. That's my little tip for the week. If you're currently struggling, or you feel like things are just piling on top and on top and on top, just take a day, feel your feels, then wake up the next day with a fresh mindset, brand new day, brand new bitch, and get back to the version of you that you know that you are. The best version. I also feel like a lot of the things that we tend to stress about as human beings are things that we physically cannot change. I know for me this week at least that 100% has been the case. I've been upset and stressed about things that I literally have no control over. Can not control them. And I think it's only taking me until right now to realize I can't change everything. I can't control everything. Even though I, that sounds great to me. I'd love that. (laughs) But that is not healthy and I cannot do that. But other than all of that, I just had a really exciting weekend with new products launching on To Nurture Your Soul. I also had a double market weekend. So my weekend was full of very fun and exciting things. Launch day went amazing. One of the best ones that we've had in quite a few months which brings me so much relief so much joy so much happiness that you guys enjoyed the products that we brought to the store this month i also had my first one-on-one call with one of you guys yesterday which was so exciting so for those of you that don't know i have recently launched one-on-one coloring sessions on the store which i am just so over the moon about i am so excited i had my first one yesterday i would be lying to you if i said i wasn't extremely nervous and anxious because I definitely was but after completing it and getting through it I am so proud of not only Haley for booking that session for herself because I know how incredibly difficult it was for her she said she was extremely shy she did not come across extremely shy I was extremely shy and I feel like I'm the type of person in situations where I'm anxious or shy I will completely fake it till I make it like I will just talk about random things and, you know, just literally fake it till I make it. And I feel like that's <laughs> kind of what I did. I was like, no, you know what? As soon as this phone call starts, I'm a confident 
person. I am the most confident version of me that I possibly can be. I'm just so incredibly proud of Hayley for doing that for herself. She said the whole reason why she wanted to book one of those sessions in the first place was so that she can start to combat a bit of her shyness that she says that she does deal with. So I'm just so incredibly proud of her. She did so well and she didn't seem shy at all, which amazing love that for her so yeah that happened yesterday which i found so fun i love chatting with you guys especially in that one-on-one -on -one setting and situation like before i jumped on that call i had an email come into my inbox which was just another one of those little things that just piled on top of my things for the week that were like tearing me down a little bit so before jumping on that call and receiving that email i was like oh my god like i low-key was about to have a little cry before getting on this phone call <laughs> because yeah I just it I had a lot going on but as soon as I jumped on that phone call and I started chatting it literally filled my cup all the way up before that phone call my cup was maybe on 30% after that phone call I'd say probably like 85 90% like it put me in such a good mood I don't know I just want to say thank you Hayley I don't know if you listen to the podcast or watch the YouTube videos or anything but I just wanted to take the time to say thank you because it made my whole day and my whole week other than that we also had the double market weekend last weekend which was so fun and so successful I cannot explain to you how relieving it feels to have a really, really good weekend at the markets. The markets have been hit and miss for the past couple months, I'd say. The weather hasn't been too great. It's been after Christmas. I feel like no one's wanting to go out and spend money lately, which is totally fair because I am exactly the same. But this past weekend with Mother's Day and the weather being really nice, it was just a really, really solid weekend, which we really needed as a business. I'm looking forward to the next couple weeks with the things that I've planned coming up. There's only eight more days from when I'm recording this episode until I go to Queensland to see my bestie Bianca. I am so incredibly excited. We're planning on going to the Crystal Castle which is in Byron Bay which will be so fun and I also really want to stop into the Silent Theory store. As you guys know if you follow any of my personal social medias, Silent Theory Mm. It is my favorite clothing brand. I talk about it all the time and I am extremely, extremely lucky and grateful that I work with them on a monthly basis. So I am just so excited to go in and see their physical store. I'm excited to be in Byron Bay again. I feel like I haven't been to Byron in literally like two years, maybe. A year and a half? It's been a little bit and I absolutely love it there. I love Queensland. I think I've only ever been to Queensland maybe one or two other times in my whole life. So I'm just genuinely excited to go for the weekend. I will be filming next week's episode of the podcast like a couple days before I leave. So I'm sure I will be able to sit down and chat more about it with you guys then. But yeah, I'm just so excited. And then as soon as I get back from that, there's only going to be like four weeks or something until I get myself on a plane and I'm going to see my girlfriend which I cannot tell you how excited I am I'm so excited the days are going so slow but I feel like as soon as I get back from Bianca's they hopefully fingers crossed will go really fast I'm just so excited to see a different country to be with her again I know I don't really talk about my relationship too much online I try and keep all of that stuff very much private these days because it's just genuinely so important to me and I want to keep it for myself and just love it for myself. So yeah, I don't know, but I'm really excited for that. And I'm excited to film some content while I'm over there, to be working, to just be kind of living like a regular life, but in a different country. I don't know, with someone that I really, really care about. So I don't know. That's all you guys are getting from me on that topic at the moment, but yeah just know that I'm very excited I've got lots of very exciting plans coming up and I can't wait to take photos film things show you guys along the way I'm excited to be in different places to be inspired by different things very exciting very exciting things coming up for me in my personal life anyways I'm gonna now get up this post that I posted on the to nurture yourself story and I'm gonna see if we have any oh 
Okay, we have a couple more topic suggestions, which makes me so excited. So the first one says 10 tips or advice you'd give to someone wanting to start a small business. And the second one says how you've overcome doubt within yourself slash as a business and what tips would you give? So I feel like these two marinate together lovely. (laughs) Why did I just say marinate? That sounds very odd. (laughs) These two go together brilliantly and I feel like I can kind of like bounce backwards and forwards and talk about the two. So I'm going to start with 10 tips or advice you'd give someone wanting to start a small business. These are just going to be off the top of my head. Literally, I've just read this, so bear with me. I don't know if my answer would be different if I had time to sit down and think about it, but let me just say what comes to mind first. Number one, just do it. I know starting a business or starting anything in life, putting yourself out there to do literally anything can be so incredibly scary because it is difficult to put yourself out there for people to judge or comment on or critique. It's really, really freaking hard. But I think my number one tip always would literally just be do it. Stop giving yourself excuses. Stop waiting around for the perfect opportunity because there never ever will be the perfect opportunity. There's always going to be something and your limiting beliefs will always pick apart and bring excuses and reasons to the forefront of your mind as to why you shouldn't do it or couldn't do it. So number one, just fucking do it. Just do the thing. Number two, I think a really big thing that you need to consider when starting a business is how you are going to differentiate yourself. I think no matter what you choose to do with your business, I think you need to pick at least one thing that sets you aside from everyone else. There is so many people starting small businesses now and so many people doing the exact same thing. And I really truly do think a part of the reason that sets particular businesses aside is their uniqueness and their ability to be able to stand out from everyone else who's doing exactly the same thing that they are. Number three would be make sure you're going into business for the right reasons. Make sure you are choosing a business and going into a business, whether that's a product or service, make sure no matter what you are choosing, you are choosing it because you are truly, truly passionate about it. Starting a business, owning a business, working in a business full time is not for the faint hearted. It is a full time job. I mean, 24 seven, seven days a week. If you go into a business not absolutely loving and absolutely backing your product or service 110%, you will not get where you want to be. Owning and running your own business is so incredibly different to working full-time for someone else. Working full-time for someone else, you can clock on, do your work, clock off, go home, forget about it. Running your own business, especially when it's your sole source of income, is something that takes up your brain 99% of the time. I'm contemplating whether I want to say 100% of the time. So the product or service that you are providing needs to be one that you are obsessed with, that you could talk about for hours and days and weeks on end. It needs to be something that makes you so happy, so, so happy to sit down and talk about and work on every single day because that's what you got to do. You got to talk about it every single day. You got to work on it every single day. And if you just genuinely do not have the passion for what you're creating or what you're providing, then it's just not going to work out. Like, point blank. I don't know if that's a harsh thing to say or not, but if you're asking me for my advice, that is my 100% honest opinion. What other tips do I have? I don't, I really don't think I'm going to be able to get to 10. In terms of like the actual finance side of things, I highly recommend getting a really good accountant when it comes to tax time. Um, And I also think doing your taxes every single month, that has been a lifesaver for me. If I got to the end of this month and I had not been doing my taxes every single month, I think I would have a mental breakdown really. It only takes a couple hours at the beginning of each new month to sum up the previous month and that is something that has really helped me keep in check with how much money I'm making, how much money I'm spending, rather than just getting to the end of the month and being like, oh my god, I've spent this much and I've only made this much. That's a bit more of a technical thing. But yeah, and that goes for anyone who's self-employed. Keep on top of your taxes every single month and get an accountant. That is amazing. My accountant is the best. She gives... 
I'm trying to think I'm trying to think of an appropriate way to say this. The only way that I can describe it is that she gives crackhead energy, but about accounting. Like, <laughs> she gets off on the idea of accounting. She's just so excited about taxes. And I love that for her and I love that for me because it means that she loves what she's doing. Circling back around, she loves what she's doing, which means I can like chill and know that if she loves what she's doing, she's passionate about it. I know that she's doing a good job. I think if you're a small product-based business, a really big tip that I would have is to get into doing markets. The markets at the moment are like 50% of my income. They help me out a lot, especially when online sales are down, which I think they have been for everyone lately. So I highly recommend if you're a product-based business, getting into doing local markets. It not only is an extra source of income, each week but it also helps you get your name out there it helps put faces to names that are normally on screens i've met so so many of you guys by doing markets and by doing in-person events which will lead me on to my next tip which is creating a relationship with your customers. It is so incredibly important, especially if you have a business that is like mine, which is mental health based, to create a strong relationship with your customers so that they feel part of a community, which in turn will keep customers coming back, repurchasing and wanting to continue to support you. You know, you can have as many transactional customers as you can like one-time customers that buy one thing and move on but the value comes from those returning customers who are there waiting for every single launch who are excited to collect every single thing that you come out with and those are the people that just genuinely make running a small business so much more enjoyable. It's those people that give me the motivation, which kind of ties in to the second question that we got, like what keeps me motivated? Kind of, yeah. So it was how you overcome doubt within yourself as a business and what tips would you give? So kind of tying into that, my customer base and my customers that listen to the podcast, that are part of the community, that keep coming back for every single launch, those are the people that motivate me, that inspire me, and that keep me pushing forward in my business, even when it can get really, really difficult. That definitely is a really, really big one. I think it's one that a lot of people these days don't pay close enough attention to when they're starting a business or want to start a business whether that is product or service based it doesn't matter I think creating a community and a group of people who are excited to continue to come back to your store is so so important once again it not only helps you and your sales and your business grow but it makes you feel fulfilled I don't know I don't know how else to explain it it's not like you're just doing these little shitty transactional sales where you know that the people that buy your products or services aren't going to appreciate them for a long time. If you're putting in a lot of effort into your product or service, you want people to continue to love it just as much as you do for as long as you do, which is forever. I think that's up there with probably number one or two. Like that's the top tip, I think. Oh my gosh, what else do I have? I definitely cannot think of 10 tips. So I'm going to do one more and then we'll move on to the next part of the question. I think when creating your business, again, product, service, whatever you decide to choose, I definitely think you need to consider the type of lifestyle that you want to live. And I know that sounds crazy but it's something that I'm just learning now that I think is really really important so for example for me I love traveling I love being outside and I love being able to take my work with me wherever I go so I probably couldn't have a clothing boutique where I hand make and design every single clothing item myself because that involves a sewing machine it involves big bulky items that do not allow me the freedom to pick up and go 
wherever I want, whenever I want. And especially when you're going into your own business and it is going to be something that you're working on all the time, 24-7, every single day, like we've already spoken about, I think it is important to consider the type of lifestyle that you want to live and the person that you are. For example, for me, I love meditation. I love yoga. As we all know from last week's episode, spirituality and being outside, doing all those things are super important to me. So it just makes makes sense that my products are a direct correlation to that and creating my products don't define me to an indoor environment like I can pick up my laptop I can pick up my iPad and I really can go to design and create wherever I want to go which I don't know this is probably a bit of a controversial one or one that not many people think of, but I think it's really important, especially if you want to have quality of life in your own personal life and allow it to blend into your business really well. I think for me in particular, this is something that I have only just kind of realized that I've strayed off my path from that a little bit. In the very, very beginning of my business, it was strictly digital. Before I even started making coloring books, it was all digital. And that's how I started because I wanted the freedom and the flexibility of being able to pick myself up and go wherever it is that I want to go. Through being so passionate and so inspired by so many different things, my business has kind of like taken a bit more of a turn where I am kind of confined to one spot, which again is why I am trying to incorporate a lot more digital stuff into To Nurture Your Soul now because as of late I have picked up on that. I've caught myself from the past year or so and I've realized I love making these physical products and I always will figure out a way to do that but I also need to incorporate a little bit more digital back in to allow me the flexibility and lifestyle that I've always wanted to have and that I wanted this business to be able to give me. I don't know how many tips I just rambled off. I think maybe like four or five. I don't know but hopefully they were somewhat helpful. I don't know if I could even think of 10. I think at the end of the day, just make sure you are doing something that you are passionate about, that is making a positive difference, that you love, and that you can do 24-7. And you have to be able to continue to show up for yourself every single day. Like I was talking about in the beginning of this video, I've had a really rough start to my week this week and even with those things going on in the background you need to be able to love your business enough to want to push through the difficult things that come up and the challenges that come up in business because trust me lots and lots lots of challenges lots and lots of obstacles will always continue to come up because that's just the way of not only business but the world it's the way of life nothing is going to be perfect 110 percent of the time even though we all wish that it would be (laughs) um As always, if there's not challenges or mistakes or difficult things that continue to show up in business and life, we will never grow, you know? It's so incredibly important to take bad decisions, choices, obstacles, challenges that come up in your business and look at them as growing pains. Look at them as a way of you learning and moving through something, as learning something and moving through something that you might not have done otherwise. I think a really big thing that I have learned within my business over the almost two years that I've had it, which is crazy, it'll be two years in August half freaking crazy. But the number one thing that I've learned when it comes to challenges or mistakes, that I have always learned something from it. Always, 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 always. I actually was at a business talk a few months ago now. Gosh, it was probably almost a year ago, which was put on by a lovely girl named Alicia. She runs a business called Morning Mindfulness, which is a Newcastle-based business, and she does morning yoga sessions, breath work, all that beautiful stuff that I was talking about in the last episode. And I actually spoke at one of her events that she put on for people who wanted to go into business. And one of the questions that she asked me while I was on this panel was what was a time that your business has failed and how did you overcome that or something like that and the question was literally so hard for me to answer like I sat there and I was like I don't know I really don't know because I genuinely don't see any failure or anything that has ever gone wrong in my business as a failure 
because I have always learned something. I've always picked myself back up and I've always continued to move forward with the new knowledge that I learned from what had just happened. I don't know. I probably look so silly on that panel being like, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> Um, and I think at the time I just ended up saying like my first ever market ever I didn't make as much money as what I thought that I would and that was just like a quick answer for me to have an answer But like even now I would not say that because I learned so much from my first market Even though I didn't make as much money as I thought that I would and I didn't get the same return as what my high expectation was I learned so much and I did my first market and that's something to be so incredibly proud of whether I made $10 or $1,000. I did something for my business that was beneficial. All right, that's enough chit chat about tips. <laughs> Hopefully something beneficial came out of all of that and I was able to help in some way to all of my small business girlies or to any of my girlies who want to start a small business. I think if you've always wanted to do it, I think if you've got a good idea, I think if you are passionate about your idea, absolutely 110% do it. Even though it's the absolute hardest thing that I've ever done in my whole entire life, it is the most rewarding thing that I've ever done in my whole entire life. The next thing that I want to talk about is how I've overcome doubt within myself slash as a business and what tips Tips would I give when you're working for yourself and your sole income is from your business the amount of self-doubt and limiting beliefs that go on in your head is insane especially if you're an anxious galley like me anxiety mixed with self-doubt and being your own boss is a whole big concoction full of brain fuckery <laughs> And I feel like that's the only way that I can explain it or describe it. It can be so incredibly hard, especially when you're on your own journey of healing yourself at the same time as running your business. That's a challenge that I've had to go through throughout the past two years. My business has allowed me the chance to work on myself and grow and to become a better person and to learn to understand my mind. But doing it at the same time can be a real backwards and forwards like tug of war type of vibe like some days can be amazing and other days can be full of self-doubt whether that is with the business or personally I think when you do make the choice to go into business and be a full-time business owner they all just mix together like your life is your business your business is your life your anxiety is your business's anxiety, your business anxiety is your anxiety. I don't know if that's, that's probably not healthy. <laughs> and it definitely is something that I'm working on, trying to split the two apart, but, but it is really difficult. And I think self-doubt will always have like a little nugget in the back of your brain, no matter how much work you put into yourself or your business. And this is going back to the beginning when I said, just do it. I know that it's scary, but just do it. Creating, running, and owning your own business is fucking scary. And that is okay. It is okay to have little seeds of self-doubt every now and again. As long as you know how to deal with that self-doubt when it comes in and how to process it and let it go in a healthy way, all of that stuff is so incredibly normal. And I don't know if... I will ever fully overcome that. And I don't know if it's a realistic idea to put into my head that I will get to a place where I will fully be over the self-doubt, but I think just striving for, is that the word? Striving? I've said it too many times now, I don't know. <laughs> but I think just looking forward to being at a place where self-doubt is maybe only like 5%, 10% of your brain instead of like 80, 90, I think that's a bit more of a realistic goal rather than overcoming it completely because we are all human and self-doubt, whether that's within your business or within your everyday life is going to be so, so normal, especially with the world that we live in at the moment, like with technology and constantly like comparing yourself to people online, comparing yourself to other businesses. Social media is so incredibly beneficial for small businesses now, more so than it ever has been. But I also feel like it can be such a detrimental part to it as well, especially when it does come to doubt within yourself and your business. I think a tip for this in particular is going through your social media every couple months and doing a complete cleanse. If you find yourself comparing yourself to other people or doubting yourself because of other businesses or other influences, go through and completely unfollow all of those people. Trust me, 
it does wonders for your mental health. It really, truly does. You don't have to go through and block anyone and no one needs to know that you're not following them anymore, but just go through and do a complete social media cleanse for you. And other than that, I just like to live in my self-delusion bubble. <laughs> and I know that sounds crazy, but I think it's the biggest bit of advice that I have when it comes to overcoming self-doubt is that just live in your little bubble of delusion. Think that your business is the best, you are so successful, you are doing all the right things, you're on the pathway to getting to where you want to be and you will get there. Just live in your little bubble of delusion. And then other people's opinions slowly start to fade away because you are just in your little positive space on track moving forwards and upwards. I think it was maybe last night I had a TikTok come up on my feed and it was like, I don't know, I've been getting lots of TikToks being like, how to become a millionaire. <laughs> I don't know what that TikTok algorithm is saying to me at the moment. One of the videos was literally just saying to be delusional, just fully believe that you are that person. Wake up every single day and make the choices that you would if you did have a million dollars, if you did have a million dollar business, if you were selling out of every single product every single launch day. Wake up and live your life exactly how you would if you were in that position now. Don't wait for that life to come to you. Sit down, stand up, start your day every single day as if you are that bitch. And that comes back again to living in the delusion bubble. You have to wake up every single day and just tell yourself that you are successful. And this is something, again, that I am working on. I am going through and working on all of these things with you guys at the same time that I'm telling you about them. And that goes with any topic that we talk about here on the podcast. I'm always learning and growing with you all. I don't know. I've been seeing these TikToks on my feed for the past few days, maybe a week. And I think it's telling me that I need to put these into action. Like I've always known that this is a thing, like live in your own delusion, wake up every day as if you are that bitch. But I feel like I never fully do it to the extent that I probably should to make it actually workable <laughs> to make it actually you know work and happen for me so make it a challenge for yourself i think that's what i'm gonna do starting monday no you know what starting tomorrow i'm not gonna wait for a day i'm gonna take my own advice i'm not gonna wait for a certain day starting tomorrow i'm gonna wake up and i'm gonna live my life like a millionaire <laughs> and i mean don't go crazy don't go crazy with that idea because <laughs> if I truly was a millionaire, I probably would, you know, move to a different country or buy a house. I don't know. If I was a successful business owner who had a million dollars, I'd probably go out for breakfast. So maybe I'll do that tomorrow. And with all of that being said, I feel like that's all of the tips and business advice that I have for today's episode. This is going to be a short episode again. I can already feel it. When I first started this podcast, I was aiming for hour episodes and I was like, this is going to be so easy. I know I love to chat. I know I can go on and on and on. But when it comes to editing these, I could be recording and chit chatting for one to two hours. And it always ends up being like 30 to 45 minutes long, which I want these episodes to be 45 minutes to an hour minimum. But it's just so hard. And I think I've realized that I talk myself in circles a lot. And by the time that I edit it down, I really have not said that much but I've just said a lot in a long amount of time. So I'm sorry that this episode is a little short, along with the few other episodes that have been short. I really would love to be able to sit down and pre-plan each episode and have a whole list of everything that I'm going to be talking about in each episode, but it's just so hard because I don't know what topics you guys want me to talk about. So please let me know in a comment down below if you're watching on YouTube what you would like to hear me talk about in next week's episode. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, or even if you are watching on YouTube, please make sure to email me in all of your topic suggestions or advice questions or story times or literally anything that you would like me to share on the podcast. Please make sure to email us at to nurture your soul podcast at gmail.com. As always, I absolutely love reading all of your emails to that email. It makes my day, it makes my week, it makes my month, it makes my year. It genuinely makes me so happy um, and it really, really, truly does help help me be able to make these episodes a little bit longer than like a half an hour or 45 minutes ish make sure you're following to nurture your soul on all social medias as well as my personal my personal socials are just all i'm Lacey jane um if you want to keep updated with what's going on following my personal socials is probably the best thing to do if you want to see all my adventures upcoming over the next couple months 
um i'm so excited and i can't wait to talk to you guys next week as always if you have not done that one thing for yourself this week then please make sure you go ahead book something in for yourself this week go out for lunch go get yourself a coffee do one nice thing for you this week because you deserve it i love you guys so much thank you so much for hanging out with me today and i will talk to you all in the next episode <laughs>